Hey guys, I thought I'd show you today how I do my own wet palettes. So I picked up a container from my local dollar store and I picked one with a, a plastic lid but I do like a glass bottom, uh, it's easier to clean paint off and a good seal inside helps keep your paint fresh when you do want to close this up. And glass is really easy to clean the paint off of compared to plastic. Next I got a couple of sponges. Um, found these at the dollar store too, they come in a pack of three and uh, two of them stack up perfect just to make it the right height and they fit perfectly inside. And I got a gigantic roll of parchment paper. Um, I spent two dollars on this and I think it's 60 feet. But uh, once you cut that up into little two inch by four inch or whatever size your container is squares, you probably get enough to last you a lifetime. Um, now parchment paper is good because it doesn't have a waxy film on it. It lets water pass through it and that's what kind of keeps your paint alive but it doesn't break down like tissue paper or normal paper would on top of a sponge. And now I get out a ruler here and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure up my sponge and I cut my parchment paper just a little bit smaller than the sponge. Um, if there's an edge hanging over the parchment paper, it or hanging over top of the sponge from the parchment paper, it tends to curl up and dry out on its own and the whole thing will roll itself back up into a roll. So make it a little bit smaller and it'll stick down to the sponge a lot better. Now you can cut this with scissors, um, which is it's the way to go. Everybody's got a pair of scissors, so that's probably the best bet. Or if you're like me and you have a wife that's into scrapbooking or something like that, then you can raid her box and if she's really nice she'll let you borrow them one of these paper cutters and the nice thing is these have individual markings on them so you can have your measurements already pre-made and crop a whole ton of these all in one shot and it really helps speed up the process and build you a giant stack of parchment paper that you can have stashed away for projects now you can see here i've already pre-cut all of my my roll off and i've cut it down to size so it'll fit the the wet palette and it gives you a nice big stack, and that isn't even a quarter of the roll. That's 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 maybe a couple inches off of there. Now the next thing we do is we want to add water to this, and we do, you don't want to pour water until it's over top of the sponge, just up below the sponge, just so enough so that the sponges are completely saturated with water, and there's a little bit of a reservoir down there. Now most people you see in videos they'll tend to just throw the paper on top. That doesn't work as good for me. What I find is priming the paper first. Let your paper soak for a couple minutes in the bottom of a jug or something. and That usually helps get the uh, the paper to start drawing water through it. I always got rags on hand to keep my hands clean. That really helps if you spill paint. Okay, it doesn't take very long. Pull out our paper and it's already kind of soggy. It's not going to get really soggy because it doesn't ever get technically wet. And then just smooth out all the air bubbles and get it so it sucks down to the sponge. Once it's sucked down completely to the sponge, it will start drawing water through itself. Now I'm just dabbing off the excess water because you don't want pools of water flowing into your paint. And there you have it, it's all ready to go here. And I like dropper bottles myself, and these work out great for uh, wet palettes. So you can just put a couple drops right on there and you're ready to go. The other advantage this does have is um, as it's drawing water through, it will tend to thin down your paint, so you don't want to ever put your paints on the palette pre-thinned, because they will thin eventually. 
uh, if you find your paints aren't thin enough, throw the lid on, walk away for 10-15 minutes, come back, and they'll be pretty runny. Now when I'm using um, anything that comes out of a pot, like uh, the P3 paint, paint range or like anything from Games Workshop paints, uh, you just open it up. Um, I use an old brush, some people use the back end of the brush, and just get a, a little dip of paint and then roll it onto the palette. Again, don't thin them down because they will thin down over time. Now we can store our paints, we can put the lid back on, and then that'll help uh, the water absorb and cause them to thin down a little bit so we're ready to paint, um, or it'll just keep them fresh. Now here's a palette, i um, been working on this one for a couple of weeks, and as you can see the paint is really runny, it's already separated. Um, you do have to stir them up if you leave them for a long bit of time, but a little bit of mixing and they come right back. But as you can see, like there's no drying out. This has been in here for probably two weeks now. There's a little bit of dark brown there. Um, I think the other one is a foundation gray next to it that I mixed up earlier. That's Deneb stone. As you can see, that really has a lot of black in it when it does separate. Now you can see it does have a very watered down consistency once it has sat on your wet palette for a while. And just to show you how thin it is, um, I'll just paint this piece here. So you can see it's th pretty thin, but the, it, it doesn't. It's not too thin. Like you still, you still have good coverage. Um, it's not truly. Uh, it hasn't lost all of its opacity. Let's say it's not transparent yet. And that's all there is to it. Um, like, subscribe, and uh, share. And visit us on Facebook for more updates and still picks. Thanks a lot, guys.